on today's episode. I've been using this transistor tester that I built a lot and so much now that it's telling me that the, the battery is weak and it's only uh, a standard 9 volt alkaline battery. Buying more alkaline batteries is not very eco-friendly these days. Previously I bought this lithium ion battery which claims that it's 9 volts, 780 milliampere hours, but clearly being lithium ion it cannot be 9 volts. Indeed, when we measure it, it is no surprise that it's around 8 volts and its peak would be obviously 2 times 4.2, 8.4 volts. It's not uh, not stating the truth on, on the package there. Clearly all it is is two small lithium ion cells connected in series. Now I happen to have some similar cells. These are from a small quadcopter that I was that I was given, and these are 3.7 volts nominally at 600 milliampere hours. So they're going to measure, let's see what this one is. So this one is clearly in need of a, of a charge, it's only 3.5 volts, but it will come up to, to 4.2 on a full charge. My idea in the battery compartment here for the tester, I think there's ample room to put a couple of these cells change the wiring, put in this small two cell charging module and connect a 12 volt jack and we'll be good to go. Let's try it out in practice. Before we can wire the board up obviously we need to know what the pin connections are and I have an entire video about this board uh, which I'll link to in the description and you can probably see on the screen here now. I suggest strongly that, uh, that you watch that. On this side here we have the input negative at the bottom and the input positive at the top. The functions of these are explained in my other video. Over here we have the link which needs to be bridged for it to operate at the 8.4 volt range. The connections here are the battery negative and the battery positive. Note that when charging 8.4 volts we need a minimum input voltage of 8.6 and I should be using 12, that's recommended in the, in the data sheet. The only other thing to note is to do with these two resistors here which set the charge current. Now by default the charge current is set to 2 amps which is going to be too much for the little cells that we have. What I've done is to break this track here and that sets the current to 1 amp. Let me just zoom in on that for you. Normally we have these 2.1 ohm resistors in parallel but by breaking this track here this resistor is isolated and we only have the one which resets the charge current to 1 amp. Now let's get wiring. I've wired up the input 12 volt jack to the input terminals here and now it only remains to connect the battery up so we've got the, the negative lead from the battery and the negative lead to the meter there. And finally the positive battery connection and meter connection. Now we have everything in place we can test our handiwork. So not surprising the 8.4 volts. We have nothing in there to test at the moment. Now for charging put in our 12 volt adapter. And we can see the red charge indicator coming on there. We saw that the cells were already at 8.4 volts, so that won't stay on for very long. So it didn't take very long, um, as expected, because the cells are charged. We now see the blue charge complete indicator, so we can remove our 12 volt source. And just checking one last time. So yes, 8.5 volts. So I think that's a, a useful addition to the tester here and uh, we don't have to buy any more alkalines.